Thank you for downloading episode number 25 of Gamify 24-7. That's a lot of numbers to say in a sentence. I'm glad I got them got them the right way around. That could have been really confusing. Um, don't forget as well, you can get in touch with us. You can email us and you can leave comments in the bottom of the YouTube page. Uh, well, not just generally the YouTube page, but our YouTube page thing and um and yeah and just generally if you want to get in touch please do we want to hear your gaming thoughts and questions and things but first of all welcome to gamify 24 <laughs> 7 Gamify 25 7 I, like, I really oh. should have yeah. I should have done it deliberately but by mistake just but confuse I, people who needs to have good brand representation who needs it exactly well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. who said that was ever important so uh, so first of all it's um, it's been a little quieter this week in terms of gaming news so let's start off with the the games that we've been playing this week uh, Kat what have you been up to in the gaming world me, me. <laughs> I can't tell if you're looking at me or not. <laughs> oh, I said, I said, I said cat, but I mean, oh, I um, didn't hear that. yeah, I think but, you went you know, robot there, so it was just oh, like, did yeah. I? Okay. Sometimes you go into a robot state. Yeah, over literally the iPad. a perfect sensor. It was just like, yeah. So what have you been playing? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it could have been neither of us. Um, I, and for those for those that don't realise that, because we did talk about this in like week one, and then maybe again in week five, but uh, you guys are all in Edinburgh and I'm in Aberdeen um, and I'm, we're, we do a lot of the, our conversation over Skype so usually it's fine it's like it's problem free it swimming, goes swimmingly well but then once in a while every so often I just start to like that and then it's ruined so anyway I'll start again Kat what have you been playing this week? Thank you well Mike I have been I've been <laughs> ill this week but and therefore asleep a lot more than usual which is already quite a lot mm. but I today was playing Night in the Woods because of my sleepiness. I thought this is quite a nice, easy little platformer, so I will give that a go. But it actually got very dark, and then I fell oh, really? asleep. So <laughs> yeah, in the afternoon, <laughs> yeah, it's it's getting a lot more dark and stuff than I thought. I kind of just thought these are kind of like young adult problems. She got drunk at a party and spewed. Who hasn't been there? But then it was like she had a dream and she kind of met like gods, but God didn't care and about anything. Oh. And I was like, oh, that is dark. This is the thing I want to play today. So yeah. Well, you played it, it on a Sunday, so that's good. I, yeah, the, you yeah, know, exactly. It's fitting. It's, it's what, fitting. What's basically. what is it on? What where, where can we get hold of it if we want to check it out? Because I don't I don't really know the game. Um, it's so, I've talked about it before. It was one I backed on Kickstarter. This is the backed, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's in like 2013. Yeah. So it's it's on PS4. Obviously, that's where I'm playing it, and also mm -hmm. PC, I believe. Uh, maybe, maybe iOS as well. I'm not too sure, but I'm, I think you can get it on like Steam and everything like that for PC. So yes. awesome. It's very. It's worth it though. It's not what you think it's going to be, and it's really pretty, and the soundtrack's lovely. So I would recommend yeah. it. I I will finish it someday. I remember you talking about it now, and I remember um, you saying at the time that you're not necessarily a fan of platformers, but this was one that interested you yeah. from the start. So yeah, it's really cute. Also, because like everyone's animals, that's I think that's what mm. the, if everyone was people, it's I always a winner. Really clicked with it that much. <laughs> but because everyone's animal, the main character's cat as well, it just makes it like hundred ah, times well, more appealing to me. Yes. Uh, Anton, what about you? What have you, what um, have you been up to gaming-wise? Uh, I've been spending more money than I should, and I picked Again? up... Again? Yeah, it <laughs> this was... This is like the story of every week. <laughs> I know, I have a problem. We'll, not, we'll gloss over the problem. Um, I saw Gravity Rush 2 on clearance, so picked that up. Um, pretty good. I still think... I somehow prefer Gravity Rush 1. This one seems to be more RPG-ish than the other one. And the last one had, like... A, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Gravity Rush. I've yeah, I haven't played it, but I, I, I yeah, it. Um, similar. It's awesome. You just get to control gravity, and you just essentially fling yourself at enemies and kill them. Oh, I um, said that before. Yeah, that it's good. on Vita. It's a selling app for Vita, and I'd probably. I think that's why I've heard of it, but I haven't actually it's tried it. The num like the best game Persona the Vita has. Was, what, whoa, oh, whoa, there. Okay. Persona Four Golden is one of the best games on the Vita. Saying that, that's I like agree with PS that. That's a PS2 game, isn't it? But Persona 4 Golden was like the Vita one, I think. Because I think there was Persona mm. 4 that came out first. 
Oh yeah, and the Ivy Soft. Yeah, but Golden's the definitive. It's like got yeah. everything and more. It's, it and, has that and... golden ending that I hear about, but have never achieved. Because I haven't achieved any um, ending yet. So. Really? <laughs> but, Are you still yeah, playing no. it? Well, I, I kind of when I got back from Florida in uh, February, I, I, that was my Florida game, and I played like in between going on the rides, not literally in the queues. That oh would have been weird. God. I was going to say, how on earth did you have time to like do things like just at night? Just like you know that when you you come back into the, your your room and it's you're kind of like. Oh, I need to sleep because we're getting up early tomorrow and you're like I can't sleep so that was when I was playing it so I got in about uh-huh. 15 hours or something of it but um, and I, I loved it I, it was great but um, I haven't gone back to it and I need to but um, it's still on my list it's just it, it, it's just life getting in the way of oh, games I know. that's why you, you have know? to make it your life that's, well, I know, I'm trying. <laughs> that's life number one. I'm trying to this do that with life Persona still two. as well, make that my second life. I'm getting there, guys, with Persona, by the way, is my update. We'll have this update oh, yeah. for the next year, approximately, as I slowly Talk, through it. Talking about updates, have you heard the Undertale news? It's finally available to buy. My, actually, I got the email from Fangamer the other day mm-hmm. telling me I could pre-order the physical edition on Fangamer. That was also the day I discovered I had minus money in my bank account, so oh. I couldn't actually do it. And I was like, oh, contactless, everyone who listens, it's the devil, don't do it. That's when oh, my bank card came it. with contactless, and I was like, whoa, I don't have to wait to put my pen in? So don't, yeah. just do wait to put your pen in, just because it's different, it's, it makes everything different, and you seem to spend more money somehow. But yeah, I digress. Uh, I will do it. I just was quite scared that yeah. I wouldn't. I would run out. Mm. Like the pre-orders would stop. Have they have, stopped? Are they still going? They're still going. As I'm aware, have you seen the prices though? Yeah, it was. Like, was it like sixty something? Sixty dollars for like a Vita game plus. But I want that locket. Mm-hmm. I want yeah, that it's like plus postage as well. It's like it gets it up to like sixty pounds. I'm like, eh, fifty pounds. Sorry, I'm. I like, can do mm. that. I can. I like that's. Probably why I'm in minus money. So, <laughs> um, but I I feel like I that's one of the things that I need to buy. Payday is on Tuesday, so I'm holding out. So what you need now? Still be there on Tuesday. I think so. Uh, from what I'm gathering is because they're doing the pre-order so early. Yeah, it's not until September. I'm thinking maybe they're like seeing what kind of interest they've got and then printing how many they need, because it is mm. very early for a game that's already be fin like being finished for yeah. them to be well I'm thinking it's also because like the physical if you get the physical edition with all the extras that's yeah they need to make that many lockets with a music box inside yeah and <sighs> it's like ro- so like you. proper gold plated as well so yeah and just yeah you get all those lovely like illustrated books and stuff and, like Tammy I can't spend more <laughs> Tammy though the one day stop Billy. trying to make Anton spend more money he's already spent enough as it that's is this very week. True. Honestly, I'm sorry Anton but I'll I have take a problem. it in and show you it when I actually <laughs> oh, do it and that'll make you so change. has there been anything else that you've been playing this week Anton or is it nah, or is, or is that gravity, gravity rush, rush? you've not been doing your Euro truck I was looking forward to hearing more about uh, where you've been trucking um, <laughs> yeah I've just been trucking around uh, the UK <laughs> Living that UK life, and then got <laughs> over to Europe, and then got in a nasty crash and rage quit the game. You crashed. Yeah. Uh, How did you crash? See, I spent like a couple days in the UK, and then went <laughs> over to France, and that's <laughs> they don't drive on the same side of the road, and that story writes itself. It's quite important to not, remember that lesson for future Anton. Just generally, it's a good driver. lesson. Have you not already <laughs> been driving in Europe? Where traditionally they drive. Yeah, I started in off in Europe. I started down in like in the middle of Germany, then went round in a circle a bunch and then went up to the UK. And I, then I, you just seemed to switch to the left and got far too used to that. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's because of what I'm used to in real life as well. I also had a horrible crash in the middle of the UK because I didn't realise that the truck I was in was in kilometres. And we use miles per hour, so I'm just going super fast and going down the can I offer you? Tip. Can I offer you some life advice, Anton? If you ever go on holiday, never hire a car. Yeah, Especially if you're in Europe. Don't. It's dangerous for other, uh, for other people. I did that in Iceland and I didn't actually know what speed limit was. I just was kind of guessing based on what uh, everyone else was doing. Let's not talk about that. I had a, I had a, I had a moment like that yesterday and I'd, I'd rather not talk about it because <laughs> I'm have to, that's, that's more money I could have spent on games not going to be spent on games thanks to my moment yesterday, but never mind. Oh, oh. no. 
that sounds no. do, you, do, do you know what it was though? They, cha- they changed the speed limits and on the road we were driving up um, quite recently and there's a camera and the camera used to be the old speed limit and I'm so used to drive. I don't drive up there that often but when I do it's always that limit but it's now lower than it used to be. So I was just like, yeah, this is fine. N- taking it nice and easy, nice and... No, that's not slow. I'm too fast. Oh, I'm in trouble. So, you know, that's... It's like, it's like the real life version of Euro Truck Simulator. Like driving. <laughs> That, yeah, for real. <laughs> for real. So don't do that. Who would ever don't do thought that. you would have this technology to drive for real? It's insane. I know. I know. It's crazy. Too, well, too these games are getting more and more realistic every yeah. year, you know? Um, yeah. I got Splatoon 2 in the post um, yesterday, which was exciting, although I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I've also got the a new Splatoon Pro Controller, which is... Um, it's a pro controller it's it's just got like a little pattern on it it's cool it's great but it's the same as the other pro controller i have so obviously it didn't do anything fancy like make me better at games but um <laughs> splatoon 2 i i have only just had a chance to because i i took it with me to the hotel that we were playing in inverness last night but the wi-fi was terrible so i couldn't get on anything so i just that's you know for you. I'm customized that, so <laughs> yeah you're allowed we you've got you've got like you know connections but um but no i couldn't do anything i couldn't uh, so i haven't played it yet so i'm going to play it after the recording of the podcast for the first time but i am looking forward to it there's been some interesting initial reaction from people though a lot of people loving it a few people not quite impressed with the difference between the first one and the second one but then i haven't played the first one so that doesn't bother me also this headphone app um that or the the system that's come out for the switch causing a few problems very complicated i heard and you can maybe clarify this guys i heard that you have to have the screen on the whole time in order for the app to work is that right so you can't it can't actually dim know what the app does on your phone I, again i don't switch so i'm yeah. paying attention the what app's kind of in a weird state where it's almost what it should be essentially right now all it does is voice chat and lets you see your splatoon stats and that's pretty much all it does and um, right. regarding the audio situation i'm not familiar with that i've kind of been out of the, the past what? week why can't you do audio chat on your switch um, Nintendo's explanation, Nintendo's, not mine, <laughs> okay. is you don't want to have a bulky gaming headset on the train. And I'm like, why can't... Uh... So their theory is you just use your normal head, like, earbuds well, like, on the Switch. Like, have they seen the, the, play, the, the standard one that comes with a PS4, for example, is one earphone. Yeah. And it's, you don't even see where the microphone is because it's just a little, like, on my, on mm-hmm. my earphones here. They're, that's all it is. It's not. Yeah. It plugs into your controller. It's not like it's. It's not a bulky headset, and it's not the best quality. But you can hear what people are saying. My ex. My theory of why the Nintendo's decided to put their voice chat through this app is just so that they can either listen one, to you. Yep. Totally. <laughs> Sorry, I, was, I just got a conspiracy theory brain there for a second. Nintendo want to listen to what you're saying. <laughs> Record it all. It's either... Personally, I'm thinking they've made it go through the app, either because they're horrible at making UI software uh, look back at the Wii U, for example, or they're wanting the option so you can use Nintendo voice chat even when you're not on your Switch, so your friends can be playing games and you can just be like on Talking their chat to, to them. Distracting mm. them, I see. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think it, it's it's potentially a good idea. It just seems to have been executed pretty um, badly so far, anyway. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I haven't I haven't tried it yet. I just know that the from reading the feedback of people, it's been it's been interesting so far. A lot of people are just not you know just not bothering because it's too complicated. It's an awful lot of cables. If you're plugging in your switch and your phone and I don't know. It just looks a bit complicated, yeah. but um, and also so, that so, last so, point with you is that not the idea like on PlayStation and Xbox? That's just a party. You just make a party with your friends and just talk in the party, and they can do what they want. You can do what you want. Yeah. As long as you're in that party, you'll be chatting. Yeah, I think it's kind of just the point of having that, but you don't have to have your Switch with you. You can just be like, let's say you went. You were like so, just... like a actual phone. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, the thing is, though, if <laughs> okay. this was their plan, why wouldn't you just use Skype? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you could just talk. Um, imagine being out somewhere and being like, you know, I wish I could talk to my friends right now. <laughs> that, that's my phone in my pocket. Here we go. But like, I'm really needing to get in touch with someone. I know. I'll turn on the Nintendo app and I'll speak to them because they're playing Splatoon right now. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, it does it? It doesn't make any sense. 
you just have those friends that are like, you want to talk to me, you come to me. I don't come to you, you come to me. <laughs> it sounds like a big Nintendo no from us. Oh. Yeah. God, I can't believe we've never used that before. I know, I'm sure it's been I've used never somewhere. I've used that before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Now I've used it once. I'm going to overuse it and that's use it for it. every answer. Nintendo, yes. Freeze. Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I think I think with Splatoon, it'll be interesting to see. It's just early days, um, but I will feed back to you next week about my experience. Because bear in mind, I have no, I, I've never played it. I am like brand oh, new to Splatoon. You're in for so. a nice treat. Yeah, I, yeah, I really like. Yeah, it'll Splatoon. be fun. I'm colorblind, but the good news is that the <laughs> colors are the colors are quite vibrant, so it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, they tend to clash, so that would be good for you, right? They, they, they always no, make them clash, is that not... No, it's terrible. It's it like... It, well, like, basically, the good thing about the colours in Splatoon are that they tend to go for really bold, thick colours. I know that sounds weird, but I, I, I tend well, to measure... <laughs> So well, yeah, exactly. But I tend to measure <laughs> measure colours by thickness, and when <laughs> colours have the similar thickness, I can't tell the difference. It doesn't make that sense to anyone. That's mad. Your eyes so mental. How does that work? <laughs> they are mental. I have mental eyes too, but in a horribly different way. That everything's out of focus. But yours yeah. sounds more interesting than mine. Well, it's just like de- Like colours have depth, right? So you can get colours that are quite, um, like quite light and thin and then colors that are really deep so if two colors are quite similar but they're both deep i find that really hard to tell the difference but if one's thin and one's thick it's fine but splatoon what's cool is that they go for really op like the colors they're using are really different so it's yeah, like a that's bright what I meant. like you'll have like the blue team like dark blue and like orange like neon orange team versus each other yeah or like bright pink yeah. versus bright green so they're not like exactly from the same palette and yeah, although that makes usually little difference to me, like when I grew up throughout through my teenage years and told everyone that my blue bedroom was fantastic, only to find out when I was 16 it had been green the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That's Didn't amazing. work. Oh my god, uh, imagine if you were a popular, a fan of a popular two, one of two teams in Scotland that don't like each other very much. Well, that well, yeah. Words. Um, and that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, the the other example was um, years ago, I used to work on a cruise ship. I used to sing on a cruise ship just for a short time. And um, (laughs) not not for a short time because I was rubbish. It's not like a laughing at that as a job. It's just that that I'm just imagining you like in a sparkly suit or something singing. Well, well, that happened a lot. That happened a lot. But what (laughs) happened on the ship was they, they used to have this painting and this painting was of a ship. Um, and it was all in different shades of, I don't know what colour, but a colour, brown or something. <laughs> and for the two months I was there, I, I honestly thought it was just a piece of brown paper on a wall. <laughs> it was only when I was told to look closer and I went right up close and I looked at it in detail on a fold. I was like, wow, there's like pictures in here. There's a boat. <laughs> there's a ship. I was like, yeah, it's this ship. All oh, right. <laughs> so oh, it does... Please it does come up. Me if you play it, like please next week when once yeah. you've had a go, if you've like been trying to play for the wrong team and stuff, I would. Oh, it happens all the time in games. Happens all the time. Really? The great, the great thing. Yeah, all the time. Like all the time. Like I get into trouble all the time because I'm like, you're shooting your own teammate. And I'm like, oh, well, you're red as well. Oh no, you're green. Oh sorry, 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 bro. Oh, so this happens a lot. Um, but the great thing about Splatoon is that the colors are really, really difficult. There's an ink. There's a color game. Oh, what is it on um, Xbox 360 uh, and on Wii? And I, ha- I couldn't play it because it was all color based. Um, and I just had to give up because mm. it was too complicated for my brain. But anyway, uh, it, colors are. I'm, oh, mm, I think I'm Deep Lob, but nobody I remembers. Was deep Lob, Deep Lob. Deep Lob. Well. It's Deep Lob. It is. That was is it? Really? It is. The original yeah. Wii, wasn't it? The Wii, yeah, that's yeah. what it was, yeah. Oh. Whatever happened to Deep Lob? It wasn't that good. They brought out Deep Lob 2, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Deep Lob 2 did come out. But anyway, that, that posed a problem. But I, I think when you just got two colors, it's not such a big deal. And I did read somewhere that they. That I, I think they've taken this into consideration when create, creating the game because there are quite a lot of people that are colorblind, so um, out of different. Well, yeah, you know, some games varieties. have like colorblind mode, don't they? Yeah, they do, which is fantastic, which is brilliant because it keeps me no better at the game, but at least from <laughs> shooting my own teammates. So it's you know it's something. Um, oh, that's uh, so hilarious! I'm so, um, I can't believe we've just found that out in 25 <sighs> episodes. 
there's there's so many other things just still to come, but you know we'll get there. Um, so so um, just moving on from, from Splatoon. Too. something that's kind of um, related there's a few releases that we're going to talk about and a couple of announcements as well but um, I wanted to talk about rage quitting because I noticed that when they were chatting about uh, on one of the threads I was reading about Splatoon 2 that some people are complaining already about people rage quitting in Splatoon now I don't know Splatoon well enough yet to know how much of a problem that's going to be I saw most people saying no that's not really a problem you're you're that's unique that you've had so much of a problem certainly when it comes to sports games it's a big issue like things like FIFA Rocket League it's like it can be an issue I would see the problem with like Rocket League and FIFA and stuff because even I get really angry at at FIFA especially but I think that's more of the people who I was playing it with rather than (laughs) than oh shots fired well yeah but um, (laughs) Splatoon, no. I've never been so angry at Splatoon that I've gone, I need to stop this now. I've <laughs> never, ever gone. Because it's like, by nature, I think, quite a friendly game. Yeah. You're, you're painting each other. You can get mortal enemies in there, believe me. Like, during a match, I mm. will be like, that's oh, that one that I Yeah, hate. you have that one person that kills you over and over again. You're like, and I am going to after get you them now. Back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's your nemesis in that match. But that's as far as the the rage will take me Mm -hmm. in Splatoon. I've never, ever lost or lost so many times that I've been like, nah, never, no, 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 no more. I think the worst case scenario is you have a bad team and you're just like, oh, I guess I'll have to do this for me. But saying that, I guess in kind of the skill-based ranking, the ranked battles where you have a ranking and you're... Oh, yeah. Those ones can be frustrating. Hmm... Well, with the Rocket League, that's the the thing about Rocket League is that you're obviously trying to win games to get more um, points and and build your build your kind of reputation up and move up the leagues. Um, the problem, the, what what they've come up with in Rocket League, quite interesting. Um, if you're playing a team game, because there's different modes you can play, but I usually play three on three, which is kind of the biggest team game you can play competitively. What they've got is that if you can actually vote to quit as a team. So if one person says I really want to quit, they can they can actually select quit. Um, and then vote to quit so that and then they have to have everybody in your team has to vote before the, the other team gets the points and you instantly lose which I think is quite cool because it, it means you've got an option to say I'm fed up guys I'm I'm losing we're losing 6-0 this is going nowhere we're wasting our time let's go and play someone else but the other team will get the points and nobody gets punished at any because everyone's voted oh, if okay, actually Rather and when you that out. yeah well it's quite cool and then what you, but the other thing that you that that happens is if you just quit without doing it then you you get I think it's like five minutes or something you can't get connected back on to a non-competitive game and I think that's quite a good way of doing it because it gives you the kind of incentive if you want to leave then that's cool but you've got to do it as a team and make a decision so that the other team get the points and it's done properly otherwise you do get punished for it I think that's quite a quite a, a cool way of doing it I think yeah and like in Overwatch you well, like, again, I don't think anyone... I've, I've never rage quit Overwatch. There's a lot of rage in me when I'm playing it, but I think that's why I do it. It's like a cathartic kind of thing. But it's, I've never been so angry that I've I've just quit. They don't like you quitting in the middle of a match. They don't They don't enjoy that. But I don't think you get punished immediately. I think it's if you do these things a few times mm. in a fairly close period of time, then they'll give you a bit of a... Like, that time period, you're not allowed to join any games for a while but if you are inactive for not even that long like i've i've gone on my phone and messaged somebody back to find myself in the menu again and been like oh Oh. and it says at the side you've been removed from for inactivity oh yeah rocket league does that damn yeah like i wasn't actually being that inactive like i would have been just like i've respawned in the in the safe room Mm. and just messaged someone back quickly before going out into the fray it's not like i've like gone out and let myself be killed or anything so that's a bit annoying to me, but I understand why. If that happens again a few times in a row, you won't be allowed to play for a bit. See, my trick for that is, is if you're in like a shooter or anything or a third-person game where you need to be go on active, but you don't need that thing popping up, just put a elastic band from both six really tight, and that way you'll just spin around in a circle and then not oh. be inactive. Hacks. There's some hacks from Anton. That's somebody that's used that to get achievement points in the past. <laughs> I remember doing that in Grand Theft Auto to get my stamina up. I was like, I'm not going to walk around for like a hundred hours. Oh, it wasn't like a hundred hours. That was like a couple hours. Trying to take advantage of of these things to get like uh, Skyrim was a good one for that, wasn't it? Mm. Trying to take advantage of stuff like that to get all your stats I, right up. 
I'm looking forward to Skyrim coming out on the Switch because I've ne- I've although I had it on the 360, I want to say no, the PS3. I've never played it. What? I know. You I know. Had it, I knew but that. You didn't play it. <laughs> yeah, Not like that that's like, a <laughs> like I have the Witcher <laughs> within this group. But yeah. Well, like I have the Witcher and I've never played it. The, which one? The third one. Yeah, the good one, the really good one. The like good, they're all good. The good one. I was, I was about to go mad there. They're, oh, they're all good. They're all good. But like the like super super good one. The, so, right, yeah. the one that everyone knows. Everyone's about. played. Mm. The second. One's <laughs> okay, very good the everybody. the commercial one, the one that the masses all like now. Yeah. Okay. So. That's it's fine. I'm okay with it being so popular <laughs> because it just means there's more like Geralt cosplay and such like for are, me to indulge in. Are you excited? All right. Well, doing a TV series all on Netflix. No. Not excited. No, I'm not because you know me. I'm the resident grump. And I think they're going to ruin it, and <laughs> it's not going to be right. And also, no, read the books, everybody. I say it all the time. Read the damn books. Like the Here's books a good are really qu- good. Just do it. Here's an interesting question for you. Then, what's the game that you should have played and everybody's played, but you've never played it? There's got to be one. Oh, I've just no. given you The Witcher, oh. and I've just given you Skyrim. I mean, they're pretty shameful that I haven't played yeah, either of those. They are pretty bad, right? I'm, I'm gonna think for a second, Anton. Do you know? Yeah, I well, need to I'm go with into my you zone. on The Witcher and Skyrim. I've never played either of them. Do you own them? Yes. Um, I don't own the. No, nah, I don't own either of them. Okay, well, at least that's a thing. That's, uh, okay, you don't I'm buy really them. bad. There's like. I'm just a hipster, so there's a lot of popular games where I'm just like, yeah, I'm going not. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, it's like Halo, I guess, for me. Like, I, I did mm. try it. I've said before, I did. I had the first one with my original Xbox, and I did try it, but it bored me. And after that, I just ignored them, all, all of them. Don't have a clue what it's even about. So I guess, and a lot of people assume, because I was really into 360 and also just... They just assume if you like games, you like Halo mm-hmm. for some reason. Especially if you're an like, Xbox player at the time, you yeah, know. Yeah, I, mean, know, that's, I would that's, just be like, nah. That's a Which one did you try? The first one. Yeah, just not baller. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I just, I just got. I did a little bit, and I was like, I don't know what this is or why I'm doing it. It was before everyone was super duper into Halo, mm, so I, yeah. I just, it just came as far as I was aware. It's just some game that came in my Xbox, and I just tried it. I was like, eh, I prefer Midtown Madness Three. Which also came with the Xbox. Yeah. And I did yeah, prefer that very much. So <laughs> maybe that's a controversial view, Mutter Manus mm. over Halo. But yeah, I guess Halo's one of the ones because I, I just, yeah, that's like still going and I've still never. And Final Fantasy actually is the other one. That's oh, one. yeah. Everyone's played some form of Final Fantasy game but me. I've never, no. I've never played any of them even for a second. I'm with you on that though. I've played a bunch of them. See, but like uh, people, people really, people have all got a favourite one and are, are like replaying a like twelve or seven or and I'm like, <laughs> this is the, the horrible thing with the Final Fra- Fantasy franchise is there's no one place you can start because every Final Fantasy game is different. Like they all have, they're almost all most like. Are different. they not connected then? Um. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Okay. <laughs> they're all different <laughs> game styles, so it's like oh. oh like if you play 15 that's nothing like any other Final Fantasy you play 13 that's nothing like any other 11 is nothing like anything else there's no one place mm. you can start in that franchise so yeah, it may as I well think, just be different games I think I'd probably quite like um, Final Fantasy in all honesty but I think it's one of those ones that I just have never felt the need to invest the time yeah, into actually doing like it's it quite, you know? it's quite daunting because there's so many and I didn't know mm. I was like when did the first one even come out was that was was that PS one times or no, was it before that? I think it was like eighty seven or something. You see, like mm. I just I'm probably never gonna play the first one. So then I was like, how how will I get into it? What will I? Because you can get quite a lot of them on the Vita, and I've been told mm. to get. I don't know if you can get a bundle on the Vita or whether you'd have to just buy them individually, but you can get a lot of them on the Vita, the older ones, mm. like the PS one kind of ones and stuff. So I've, I've thought about it, but then again, I, there's always modern games coming out and I just kind of was like, I'll carry on with those ones instead. 
So we're going to go through some of the... I've got some of the releases that are coming out later in the year very soon. Before we do that, though, um, we're also going to take a look at some bargains because there's uh, there's some, some good deals at the moment. There's a really good PlayStation sale. We're going to come on to that in a moment. But before all that, Telltale had an announcement this week, which is Ooh. very exciting. I've been playing the, the Batman Telltale game. I'm only on Season 2. I haven't really updated much from last week. Episode but. Two. Episode two, sorry, and it's um, you ruined the announcement, mate. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, I have. Episode two of season one of Batman is what I'm on, and lo and behold, they've just announced. Can you guess? Do you Batman want... oh, season two, amazing. Oh. Uh, but they've also announced. Uh, is it season four of The Walking Dead? Is it the, the fourth, fourth one? Fourth and final, final season of The Walking Dead. I okay. know many people are quite cut up about that one because. No one wanted it to end. I'm sure some people and did, but I, I've not played the third series yet, but I, I would like it to just keep going forever. I love it. Yeah. Um, they've also announced The Wolf Among Us, the second yes, one, I believe, so which exciting. is good. I loved um, The Wolf Among Us. That was one of my faves. I was really excited about this announcement because I'm really enjoying the Batman, uh, the first season of Batman at the moment. The only thing that was missing for me is I would have liked them to have done a second Game of Thrones. I Yeah, I thought about that, but then... It's like possibly a, the way that it ended for me made it very clear that there ain't gonna be much going on in that mm. second series. <laughs> no, much like Game of Thrones. I mean, you know, it's follows a, a similar Thrones vein. Game. So yeah, there it was not. It was quite a tragedy for me. Oh. I don't know if it could have ended better or not. So I'm I because I got it with the PS Plus thingy this month. I've downloaded that. So I might give it a go and try and uh, keep more people alive this time around, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> On the talk of uh, Telltale, everybody's favourite Telltale game, Minecraft Season 2, now out now. I bet everybody's super Is excited. Is that actually that... out? Yeah, yeah. God, well, we missed that one. I, I had no idea. And They literally well, announced it and then it came out a couple of days later. I'm like... I didn't play the first one because <laughs> I didn't. What it's actually it? surprisingly accessible. Like, I thought you were going to say surprisingly okay. And I was like, well. <laughs> like, it's kind of just like Pixar y in its sense of humour. It's obviously not to the same level and personality, but for a lot of people, if you've never played a Telltale game, that's actually a decent place to start because it, like, I feel like with a lot of them, very slow at the beginning. This one just like jumps into I'm it and they're like, oh, say, everything's silly. We were talking about this before we started the recording, and you. Kind of, I have a bone to pick with you, Anton. Oh, yeah. war. Exciting. It's not so much war, it's just I'm, I feel like a, a therapist or something. I need to like talk okay. you through this. Like, why did you... Anton said he started playing season one of The Walking Dead, a masterpiece yes. in mine and many other people's opinions, and what kind of got me right into it. Like, there weren't any other Telltale games mm. at the point when I played it. That was like, like the one, the story one that started it all off. And I think... When I played it, it was quite soon before The Wolf Among Us came out. So, so around then. But yeah. I would like <laughs> to know why why you started it, but you didn't finish it. Not, not even the, the, the season. Episode one. I just got bored. Like, of what? Essentially, what, what about that bored you? I was in a car crash, crawled out, then there was a zombie, then there was no zombies. And I was like, okay, I came for zombies. I'm going to jump you, out. Wait, but, <laughs> Which car crash? The f- when, oh yeah, the when, very first one, the right at the beginning. The very first, yeah. the very, the start of the game. Where you one. start, you literally wake up there, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Ooh, and that's when you got bored. That's like that's not half an hour in. That's like two minutes in. And... Like, I was like, if this is such a good game, it would like start off with a bang, and I was expecting. But it did, but the car crashed, and that made a noise of a bang. I'm sure <laughs> that was that was really. But like after that, you're. Did you not like run into like a house or something? Yeah. To escape from the zombies that were everywhere. Yeah, no, I just I got to the house and I was like, eh, I've had enough. You were literally like minutes away from making the emotional connection that would keep you going for the next four episodes and into a flood of tears and sadness and beauty in the human spirit. 
I'll well, get, I, I'll, I'll give it another I was gonna, go. <laughs> I was, I've got a bit of a confession to make as well because I'm only about half an hour into the first Lord. episode as well. Uh, but but I enjoyed it and I intend to go back to it. My first Telltale experience was Back to the Future because I'm a massive Back to the Future fan, as in the movies, not like the the Spectrum game series. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, but the the Telltale Back to the Future series was my first introduction and I, abs- I was just amazed at the fact that we had a something happening after Back to the Future 3 that was interactive. Um, Christopher Lloyd was doing the voice. Um, you know, the guy that did Martin McFly was brilliant. They had Michael J. Fox do a bit later. It was just great. It's just such a nostalgia trip. It was good. I didn't play that one either. I think that for a fan, it's brilliant because it's really like it, it picks up where you left off. And in terms of Telltale, they've come a long way since then. Um, and I think that they're a lot more slick now. They're a lot more... It feels very... Um, it feels quite raw now when you go back. It, it feels like it's last generation or the generation before. It doesn't feel slick like the, the, the current lot of Telltale games. I think for me with Telltale, the thing about it is if you're a gamer um, and you're not necessarily always into like the, the, the story side of things and the movie side of things and the kind of the emotional connection like you talked about, Telltale games probably aren't necessarily going to be your thing. But the great thing I think about them is that Anybody can connect to it if you take your mind away from thinking about it in like the way that you think about other video games. Like think about it like an interactive story or an experience, um, and then even, you're going to love it. Yeah, like I I didn't even think about any of that though. Like I just maybe it's maybe it's just me personally, but when I played The Walking Dead, I didn't know what it was or what I was getting into. Like I obviously knew The Walking Dead, yeah. the TV series and the graphic novels and stuff, but. Yeah. I just had heard it had won. I think that previous year it had won an award for like game of the year. It it mm. definitely won like best game award, maybe multiple. Yeah. And I was like, can't believe I didn't hear about that because there was the other Walking Dead game, which I think was more based on a TV series that was terrible. Oh, survival instinct. Yes, yeah, so I think that was sure. just awful. That's right. So I was kind of like, oh, there's actually a good The Walking Dead game. This is interesting. I'll just get the first episode because it was quite cheap mm-hmm. on Xbox Live. Um, on Xbox and then yeah and I played the first one and I was just like <gasps> it was like <laughs> mine, my mind was blown it was like that glass shattering yeah. sound effect and I was like oh my god this is amazing and then I could not stop I couldn't stop until I'd yeah. done the whole first series and it was heartbreaking and it was beautiful and I, I just loved it I didn't even think about that it's a lot of it's like quick time events and you're like I love picking like dialogue and like pick, making all these oh decisions. yeah me too and the pressure is what i love as well i love that pressure of some like i don't know if it's even true but in the corner it'll be like such and such will remember that and i'm like oh, oh no is does that yeah. mean i said the wrong thing or like oh so yeah. it kind of makes you really you've got or you're timed as well every time you're saying something so you're like really trying to think carefully about what you say and how it might affect people and yeah, you don't know what's going to happen or who's going to... Because it's Walking Dead, who's who's going to die? Who's, You know, mm. it's... Yeah, it's... it's They've definitely amazing. moved on as well. Like, in, in terms of that side of it, the, the different ways that the game can go, it's a lot more... There's a lot more can change now than when they started out in the Telltale games. I think one of the criticisms are that no matter how you play it, like the certainly some of the of earlier choice, ones, kind of. it's an illusion to a point, to a certain point. To there a, are things that point. are different. Like, there are always things that are going to... Yeah. be different about them but yeah there are some unchangeable truths in yes. the games but it's yes. not so much that's not the important thing to me either that it's that I couldn't get out of that happening it's the way that you get there I think yeah it's like the, the experience mm. of it it's and you have to be you have to do that experience to get that connection to it because you properly will get you really will there's part of you there's part of everybody who can feel feelings, I think, who will get connected to this, these oh, games. I wouldn't put your bets on it. <laughs> and, um, my, I got my dad the Walking Dead season one for Christmas after I played it, because I traditionally would get him a game every year, and uh, I've, I've stopped since that year because he tried to play it, and again, he didn't like it, and he stopped and was just like, nah, nah, I didn't have to play, and it wasn't like, I wasn't really playing enough, it was just a story, and I was like, but that's the thing and it it is I think that um, 
I think that again, it's interesting because you obviously had a connection with The Walking Dead as a, as a franchise and as an idea, and I was the same with Back to the Future, and that's what got me into wanting to play it. Um, interestingly, though, I think that you don't necessarily need that for Telltale games. I think even things like Tales from the Borderlands, mm-hmm. um, you don't need to know about the characters particularly. It helps, and it's a good thing to it to, does to help, know, but you know. Like, the characters but they're great the stories. Aren't the ones like the characters you play and stuff in the game are not from no. the Borderlands games. They're different. Ones. Same as Game you of Thrones. You interact and... with people who were in the games, and for a fan of the series, then you're kind of like, ah, oh, that's funny that yeah. they're in this game. But you don't need to know. You don't need to know. And it's yeah, yeah Tales from Borderlands is hilarious, by the way. So that's why I, I haven't played it yet. I'm looking forward to it. So, so serious and like a lot of dark things going on in them that I'd played, and then I played Tales from Borderlands, and like Borderlands, really, really funny. So. so- so to sum up, are we are we happy about this Telltale announcement? Is this good news? Wolf Among Us, Walking Dead, Batman? Heck yes. I'm excited. Yeah, I'll say that's good. They own a genre, so to make sure Telltale's doing well, make sure the genre's doing good. Yes, and uh, I await your, yeah, well, your opinion when you played some more. According to Mike, we've got a good humble bundle with all the games. Yeah. So I'm going to snap that all up. <laughs> so this this is a really good deal at the moment. There's a humble Telltale Games bundle available. And uh, if you pay $1 or more, I'll just quickly go through these because it is, it is a really good deal. You'll get Sam and Max Season 1 and 2, Puzzle Agent 1 and 2, Bone Episode 1 and Episode 2, uh, Hector, Badge of Carnage, Telltale Texas, Hold'em, Poker, Night at the Inventory. <laughs> that, that might be the fillers. Uh, the Walking Dead Season 1. If you pay more than the average, you also unlock um, Michonne's The Walking Dead, the, the oh, added on, add-on one. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands and The Walking Dead Season 2 and Game of Thrones, which is really good. If you pay uh, $15, which is around eleven forty-eight, roughly, that's my quick translation for you, uh, oh. currency. Uh, it's written down here. Um, you, as well as all that, you'll get Batman the Telltale series, which I'm playing at the moment, and you'll get Minecraft Story Mode and Adventure Pass as well for Minecraft. So really good uh, uh, deal at the moment. If um, if you want to check that out, then then do. So well, you should, Anton, for sure. Yeah, Wolf Among Us is really good too. Oh. Yeah, because that's like also, a um, comic book series and stuff. Fables, isn't... have you ever read any fables? No. They're good, it's good. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I kind of fancy um, Big B a little bit. <laughs> also, PlayStation have a pretty good sale on at the moment. Kat, have you been uh, delving into it? I've not been delving. I've been torturing myself. I was in minus <laughs> money, I discovered, as I I may have said to you guys earlier. So uh, no, no games have been purchased by me in the sale. I have been quite tempted, though, because it's, it's kind of the same ones I always see in the sale for, like, £3. And I'm like, £3 yeah. isn't a lot. But that quickly will change, though, with the billions that I want to buy of it. It's like half a full boyfriends down there again. It's like £2 something, I'm sure, or oh. 3 I know. That could be my, my wow. favourite game ever, Pigeon Dating Sim. I've been wanting to play it for ages. Got, it like, does look interesting. Loads of other stuff as well that I really want to get. Talking about uh, dating simulators, in the news, have you heard about Dream Daddy? It's now out. That doesn't sound good. Sorry, what now? <laughs> it's um, your dad, um, you, your partner has died a sad and tragic life and you realise you're now done with women and you just want to date other dads. Just other dads? Yep. Exclusively. And it's actually <laughs> doing the realms and it's quite popular. <laughs> that does sound quite good. That does sound it Sounds good. hilarious. Yeah. You get, to des- you get to design your character, it's fantastic. Oh, well, that's something I would enjoy more of in dating sims, designing mm. my character. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, oh, that well, that sounds promising. Okay, interesting. Thank you for that, Anton. I'll put that, I will put that on my... Anton's uh, t- recommendation. Of Anton, <laughs> Anton says, get this one. Um, all right, then. Uh, we're going to look at some of the games that are confirmed for later in the year and some of the releases and see if, we, um, if we're if we interested or excited about them. So here's a couple uh, that have, at the moment, no date announced, but they're interesting and we can see what you guys think. So mm-hmm. uh, any of you guys played Nidhogg before? I've heard of it, but not played it. Uh, yeah, game. Heard of it. It's been on my wish list forever, but it never comes down low enough. 
<laughs> am I am I right in thinking it's the the two player one where you run at each other and then you um then one of you wins like bas- yes it is it's the one where you chase each other and it's like really like eight bitty and um I have played that and it's really fun actually I played that with my brother he uh, he said you got to play this game and um we did it and actually I was obsessed I, I think I think we played for like an hour solid of just like and these are really quick games they're like two three minutes but we just did this but you know like mm. heaps so Nidhogg two could be interesting it's coming out on the ps4 pc and mac um we've got gran turismo sport on the playstation 4 anyone got any love for that no No, i think they've ruined the franchise after number four like they just they put too much time into stuff that doesn't matter like these they didn't work on the gameplay and just added a thousand cars i'm like why do i need a thousand cars when the gameplay's crap (laughs) but yeah four four is a nation i never liked any of them so not not caring Scheduled for November, we have on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC, Star Wars Battlefront 2, November 17th, it's slated for. Keen to see how the single player is on this. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm interested. I have got the other one, so... Yeah, me too. Potentially, potentially. I'll, we'll see at the time, though, because mm. I always say I'm interested in stuff that's going to come out then, but then that's busy time for games, and... God knows I'll still be playing Persona. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's quite a cool looking platform. I think it's a platformer on the Xbox One coming out called Super Lucky's Tale. Uh, and it's an exclusive for the Xbox One. It, funnily enough, it's called Super Lucky's Tale and Super Lucky looks like Tales from Sonic. Um, and it's a platformer. I don't know much about this at all, but it looks mm. interesting. There's actually an interesting history behind that, is that actually used to be a VR only game that was exclusive ah. for Oculus and then they've removed the VR and they're like, yeah, it's exclusive. It's like, is it? <laughs> it's weird. I also find it weird because they've bought up the IP for this and then they're meant to have VR, Microsoft, somewhere, they have VR. So I'm wondering if they maybe bought that up for potentially being a VR game and then then have VR ready. Anyway, that's just my conspiracy theory of the day. Interesting. <laughs> We're all about the conspiracies. I need one to make sure that we've all had a conspiracy yeah. theory. <laughs> yes, you um, get one. October, there's a few. I'll just pick out a couple of them. Uh, interesting one, Assassin's Creed Origins, PlayStation 4, Xbox That'd One and interesting PC. interesting one. In uh, no, not necessarily. It's just interesting in the sense that... <laughs> Sorry, that um, was my I... absolute dig at Assassin's Creed theory. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I get I get it. And it's it's interesting because... I loved Assassin's Creed. Like, I thought it was such a great um, idea in the early ones, one and two. And then it's kind of for me. Uh, there was there are there have been a couple of good ones, but it's kind of, I've kind of lost interest. And every time I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, cool, Assassin's Creed. Oh well. And I, I want to I want to really want to play one. <laughs> if you see what I mean, I like yeah, the idea of I it, and like I want to, to want to play something that came out every year again. I remember the days when I would be like. Well, at least I know I'll I'll get Assassin's Creed for Christmas or whatever. But then after three, I didn't want they're, anymore. They're going all out with this one. It's it's the, the Egyptian yeah. uh, world one, and they they're going to be releasing a novel, a comic series, an art book, and more. So mm. see that to me is just desperate. You to think? me, I don't like that. Yeah, it's like mm. their film with Michael Fassbender. Just because you put mm. Michael Fassbender, it doesn't mean it's going to be good, as the reviews proved. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen it, but again, I had no like. It's kind of sad that I had no inclination I to had see it. Absolutely no desire. I saw the trailer when I was in a cinema, like before it came out, and it just looked dire. Just yeah, it just looked by the numbers. Like it looked like as a movie, it just felt super like formulaic. Yeah. Like okay, we make video games. Uh, how do you do these movie things? All right, we'll just copy every other one and then just use this mold <laughs> to make ours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of the absolutely. Game, so they kind of made the first mm. one and they were like, let's just keep on making this game. Yeah, I'm I'm in the exact same place with Mike. As I like the first two, then they came to Brotherhood and then Revelation. I'm like, okay, more of two. This is cool. Two was good, and then they got to three. And I was like, yep, I don't three want to play was another one. Awful. Yeah, that's where that is exactly what happened <laughs> with me. But but like speaking yeah. of rage quit earlier, the the game that I rage quit the most and have come the closest to destroying my own controller and other property was <laughs> Assassin's Creed games. Because really, yeah, genuinely they I can understand were that. the most annoying games 
I think I've ever played. I, well, sometimes I'm the system just person, didn't work. Really, mm-hmm. but that just it's when it would Some... make you have to do things like you'd have to climb this building in ten seconds, and you've got to race this person in thirty seconds. <laughs> But the buttons don't work, mm. and you're like falling down the side of a building into a hay cart, and the other person's like running along the roof, and you're just like, "This is impossible, and I shouldn't have to do it." Yeah, I know the pain. Like in the first game, when you had to go and follow people, and like stay behind them, but not too not close. To, to them. Don't get too close. Them, oh, that yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, and oh. see, when you're trying to get through stuff, there's like ten zillion other. Like as soon as it's like, you've got to do this thing quite quickly. A crowd of people will suddenly appear, and you're trying to get through them, but you can't. Oh, you had I'm getting stressed just thinking going, about like, it. Begging They're, you for money and pushing you. And getting all over you, and people are like, "Ooh, who's that?" Looking at my you. anxiety levels, like, are already here now. Just you talking about it, oh, seriously, that's <laughs> bringing back bad holding memories. Holding boxes and pots and things, so you bang oh, into yeah. them. They were everywhere, so you mm-hmm. bump. Unless you're pressing that special button, you would bump right into oh. them, and they'd knock all over the stuff, and people would notice you and. The game that I've most become close to destroying was Raving Rabbits on the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I, we, I went through this night of just playing through it and we got really near the end of the game and it was kind of fun but just ridiculous and you know not necessarily that brilliant but not that bad either. Got to the end and there was this one and I kept thinking, there's got to be a way to get through this. And it got to the point where I was so angry that I was like having to like go outside and cool down. Turns out there was a glitch and uh, um, it was impossible. <laughs> Possible to get past it, and I've been trying for an hour. I was so angry. It was like, Aww. so it was like, literally, I looked it up online, and it was like, yeah, yeah, you physically can't get past it. They've messed it up, and I was like, oh, oh, well, that's Aww, disappointing. That's really so that's bad. why. Yeah, but also reassuring that it wasn't that bad. That it was just me that was not yeah, able to at do least it. That's, yeah, and that yeah, that game at least admitted it had a fault, whereas Assassin's Creed have never admitted that they're. Games are awful and they shouldn't have done any of this. Well, the thing I find mm. interesting, they did kind of when they announced <laughs> Syndicate in the trailer for Syndicate. It was like when you watch a documentary of how a star falls, like <laughs> the unveil for Syndicate, they're like, yeah, or Unity was really badly received. This one won't be like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, just, yeah, that's not so good. I, I've uh, not again, played one in ages, so maybe they've solved all of these yeah, problems I, that made I, me throw, physically throw controllers. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, if yeah, I physically I would just hmm. throw them away in absolute rage, and I don't... I'm reserving like judgment. That. Until until we see this one, I'm going to reserve judgment and see. You never know, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm probably just... If, it, if I find it it's good it'll be a surprise and it'll be because I happen to see it not because I'm going to be actively looking when it comes out sadly which is annoying uh, South Park The Fractured But Whole uh, October the 17th very excited about that that's, that's going two to be days good. after my birthday guys so and yes, six days after mine that's closer to yeah. me so, <laughs> so Anton Anton if you, you, know, oh. you know what to get for both of us are you no a Libra pressure. too Mike <laughs> Of course, balanced. Oh, that, there we go, guys. That's why, why the podcast works so well. There's two of us balancing. Oh, that's it. We're keeping the, the other guys in check. That's what it is. Um, so, oh, by the way, we should mention that Sean's not here today. Oh, yeah. I, I thought about that earlier. Sean's not here yeah. today, guys. Again, might yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're only 51 minutes into the podcast. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Shout again for us. Shout, shout again, shout. please, Sean. Hello. I'm there he is. Oh yeah, he's 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 away on yep. holiday this, after this also. This is the last episode with the spirit of Sean. Then yeah. it's, then there's zero Sean after that. <laughs> Sean won't even be in the room after this. Wow. Yeah, wow. So okay. The next episode sounds horrible. Um, I'm the one to blame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm well, not to blame in any way for that. Yeah, you can, you're you're out of it. It's, it's up to me and you, Anton, to get it right one way or another. We'll figure it out. It'll yep. be fine. It'll be all good. Uh, I'm going to give you one more because we're, we're running out of time, but one more game that's coming out in September, which I want to pick out. We can do this. We'll, we can come back to this. There's loads of games coming out, so we can look at some yeah, other ones next I've week. Yeah, I've got but... like, things in my head that I want mm-hmm. you to see, but we talked Same. about them before, so there's no point. <laughs> okay, well, let me do one more game, and then if you want, if you've got something you could... It's just if you've got for ones me coming to out. say it again, even though we've said it a million times. But can't all right, I'm looking forward. We'll see if we can guess. Uh, <laughs> NAC 2. <laughs> Oh, NAC everybody's favourite game. What is that even about? Um, so NAC was the launch was game for the robot? PlayStation 4, wasn't it? Was it that robot looking thing? Yeah, it's like mm. a kind of like metal held on by... It looks like it was held together by magnets or some crap. Yeah, it was like essentially just like a 
magnetic ball of particles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh no, okay, right. I've it's heard our arguments. <laughs> Some people have argued, in fact, recently, that retrospectively, NAC is not actually as bad as it, people make out. So, NAC 2, um, you know what? It could be one of those games, if they get the co-op element right, it could be one of those games that actually does surprisingly well because... Um, it, I think there is a little bit of a resurgence of co-op at the moment, mm. which is exciting because for those that want to play with someone else locally, there aren't that many games at the moment. I've spoken about this before. Mm. Uh, the Switch has been good for that. But th this would be great if they can do this right. Um, there is potential there. The first one was a little bit broken, I think, from what from what I'd read. Or it wasn't quite what it was supposed to be. Um, in the def yeah, I kind of get the criticisms of Knack. Knack was a, just kind of like... a okay game but the thing is it was a 50 pound game at the launch day of the ps4 and i think that's where Ooh. it got like messed up because everyone yeah. was like this is because i think at the time they had two exclusives for the ps4 that and killzone well yeah i remember at that time i feel like the console wars were at their most intense there mm. so everybody looked at knack with like laser eyes but in the end i think it was a really kind of solid game if you're maybe paying 20 pounds for it but yeah, not 55. Not pay 55 it's kind of like a bit crash bandicoot -y, but with a free moving camera and you can grow in size by picking up items and you, you go from like being like See, this... the size of a toddler to being a building sounds... size it sounds nice but at the same time that requires thinking mm. and me and platformers i don't want to have to think too much well, I think you can pick it up now for about three ninety nine or four ninety. Yeah. I think if I think it might be in the current sale actually, Probably. Um, the, the the July sale. sale. Pretty yeah. sure it is. I so it's maybe worth checking out. I was playing a different game also this week and oh. I forgot about it, but it's just beyond two souls. So it's. Oh scary. yeah, I played through that. Um, I played through that uh, two months ago. I was and... playing it. Yeah, this week. I'd, I'd forgotten. I'd started a game, so I carried I carried on with that. It's uh, it, it's a, it's getting quite intense. I actually just stopped because I was like, this is going, I think I've it, gone the wrong moral way in this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I I've been very tempted by revenge and uh, lives have been taken and I and I feel like maybe they shouldn't. I feel like I was trying to do a pacifist route at first and now. Oh you. Uh, it, it's broken. I, I, I love Beyond Two Souls. I just loved it. I thought it was a great game, great story. But um, I'll be interested to hear how you feel at the end of it. I feel like I'm on the road to a bad ending, guys. Like, honestly. You're going to hate my Undertale progress. I started off doing a pacifist run, kill Toriel. <laughs> I know, I didn't on mean purpose, to... On purpose, because I was going to say... I, I was being... I didn't know what I was doing. I went in there, I was like, oh, maybe I need to, like, weaken her, and then I can just go pacifist. So nope. you'd not done it before that you no. didn't kill her? No, I just killed her back. Sorry accident. if this is a spoiler to anyone, but... It's a tutorial. Anyone who's ever played it will know what we're talking about, because I did that the first time round and then went back. Yeah, I'm at that weird point of, I could go back, but I put in a lot of time, so I don't know if I should. So oh. I'm thinking just go for a pacifist run, and I'll next time do pacifist, then next time do genocide. Because you're not going to be able to get the proper passive yeah. this time, unfortunately. Fake gamer. Need to quit. Mm. Sell bad. all the games. Pretty bad. But speaking well, of Undertale as well, they've, um, yeah. that's actually going to be released in September. Right. So the physical mm -hmm. edition um, for the PS4 and PS Vita, that will be out in September. And Fangamer are now taking pre-orders for the physical edition, like a limited edition version, which comes with that beautiful locket, gold plated locket with a music box inside. And as I am minus money, I have not bought it yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm just waiting for Tuesday. I need it to still be available on Tuesday so see, I can get this. See here, when you get this locket, are you actually going to wear or are you going to keep it in the box? Because that's the thing I can't decide oh, if I do I pick don't up. Oh, I because I, I'd be scared I'd break it mm -hmm. or something. I've certainly never worn it on a night out with my history of <laughs> night outs and losing things, but I... I don't know. Mm. It's, it, it will have definite sentimental value to me. I love music boxes as well. Mm. I just love them. So I'd, I wouldn't want to damage it in any way. Yeah, and as well as that, gold's quite a malleable material. Gold so. is also not my colour. <laughs> like, silver is more my thing. So I don't tend to wear a lot of big gold jewellery. So, like, so that could go into it. Okay, gold should. chains. I have got, like, the ring from Dishonored 2 in my room in the box. Mm. Well, that's cool. So, that is like, cool. I haven't been wearing that about 
Yeah. Not your dishonoured mask. You're not wearing that down no, the street. No, I'm not wearing my core. Wear it for the next podcast either. and creep me out for the whole session. That'd be it's, great. It's more decorative. It is mm. face size, but it's it's more more decorative <laughs> than. Reminds me when they did the Halo 3 limited edition, they gave you Master Chief's helmet, but it doesn't actually fit a human head. It's just that teensy bit too small. <laughs> it's just your head. <laughs> <laughs> just for a child. Right, uh, so I'm off to go and play Splatoon 2 and go and find out how I like it. So I'm going to do that for the next half an hour. Uh, thank you for uh, listening, if you have been listening, or if you've just flicked through to the end, then hello, how are you? Um, so we're back. we're back next week. In the meantime, though, people can get in touch and they can uh, they can message us and they can leave comments and they can give us uh, things to check out as well because I think uh, we had that last week. Alistair told us about a fan based project uh, project that was happening for Time Splitters. So if there's anything like that that you spot that we should be checking out, then then let us know as well. Uh, have you guys got? Obviously, you're going to be waiting for payday. Uh, Kat, but Anton, what's your plans gaming-wise for this week? Have you got anything in mind? Um, I'm going to finish off Undertale and then try and maybe get some more Gravity Rush in. So that's kind of my current plan. There you go, indeed. Sorted, sorted. All right, then, listen, have a fantastic week, guys. Uh, and to everyone else, we'll be back for episode 26 next week. Definitely, Ooh, 26, without age. Sean. Ooh. Your future cat. Right. Uh, we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs>